thrilling story of Peyton Place. Starring Dorothy Malone as Constance McKenzie, Ed Nelson as Michael Rossi, Mia Farrow as Allison McKenzie, Ryan O'Neill as Rodney Harrington, Barbara Parkins as Betty Anderson, Tim O'Connor as Elliot Carson, Christopher Conley as Norman Harrington. Betty Anderson and her new mother-in-law, Hannah Cord, went into town on a shopping expedition. For Betty, it was routine. For Mrs. Cord, it brought the culmination of a lifelong fear. Thank you, Doctor. Welcome, ma'am. I feel so silly. I bought out the whole dress shop and you didn't get anything. Well, I didn't see anything I liked. You look lovely in the gray coat. Is that you, Hannah? Yes, Mr. Payton. Betty, I wonder if you'd type up that inventory of Mr. Payton's paintings. We have to get the list to the insurance agent this afternoon. Yes, Mrs. Corn. I'm reading that anthology of Jonathan Swift you gave me. I want you to listen to this. <laughs> I'd forgotten how devastating he can be. I think you'd better listen to me for a minute. What is it, Anna? The girl. Anne. Anne Howard? Betty and I met her in town. I've talked to her. It appears that she's going to be staying in Peyton Place. We met her in front of the general store. She was buying things for her room. Go on. She and Betty made a date to go look at some paintings. How ominous. Stop it, Martin. Hannah, you've got to control yourself. But this is serious. Do you realize they might become friends? What are you trying to say, Hannah? The girls maneuvering a, a friendship with Stephen's wife? I don't know. I do know if they become friends, they'll talk. They'll talk about you, about me, about Stephen, about... about the whole mess. Why didn't you head this off? I told you it was only a brief meeting. So you looked on Medusa and you turned to stone. I can't stand it, Martin. Somehow we must force her to leave. No. We're not going to force anybody to do anything. I'm going to sit tight. Wait till she makes her move. And then what? Then we'll do what we have to do. No. I couldn't go through that again. There has to be a way to stop it now. Do as I say. Leave things alone. Excuse me. The more people who know about my past, the harder it's going to be. Well, Dr. Morton's the head of the hospital. He has to be told. All right, Mike. I know how you feel. You know how I feel. Can we drop it now, please? No, no, I don't think we can drop it. Now, listen, Anne, you're on the staff of the hospital now. now. I've carelessly confided in the chief resident who's about to pull rank. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Now, come on off of that, will you? Suppose one of the children hurt themselves. A kid bangs his leg or bumps his head, and then he blames it on you. The whole town stuff. burns Dr. Morton at the stake. Is that it, Mike? Because he hired someone to work with the children who was accused years ago of blinding a child. And people are going to wonder if you're not trying to hide it. And they should ask why. Now, you're so direct with everything else. Why not this? Because working with injured children in the town where it happened is the only thing I want to do with my life. And I don't want to lose the opportunity because the chief of staff might not understand. All right, I just, I just think you're underestimating your obligations and you're underestimating the intelligence of a very fine man. Now, you have a flawless professional record. Dr. Morton's not about to dismiss you. Can you promise me that, Mike? Promise, no. Well, then, will you promise that you, you won't tell him until I can tell him myself? How long will that be? When I can afford to. What happened? 
gave us quite a scare, Rita. What happened? I'm all right. Here, just relax, Ava. Take her upstairs to your place. Make her lie down. Whatever you need, call me. Okay. It's not closing time. Come on. Come on, I'm going to take you home. I'm all right. Come on. I call Dr. Rossi, all right? Don't! Hey, come on. Norm? If you say you're all right once more, I'm liable to slug you. Love me? Mm-hmm. Lots? More than that. Then tell me what's wrong. I have the flu. People don't faint from the flu. I do. Is that what you want me to tell Dr. Rossi? Look, there's no point in calling him. It'll be over tomorrow. It's a 24-hour kind. Says who? Just believe me this once. I know what's the matter. I don't have to see a doctor. Go away and leave me alone. <laughs> She didn't ruin anything. Unfortunately. Well, don't you like it? I pass. Who was going to go in our bedroom? If you hate it, say so now. It's perfect. Cross your heart. Would a nice girl like you marry a liar? Mm. Oh. You're not supposed to be home so soon. I'm a mess. Want me to leave? Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Now, if you'll let go of me long enough so I can take off my coat and tie, I'll make a mess of myself, too. Sold. Now, what can I mess up? Oh, thanks. Since when am I not supposed to come home when I feel like coming home? Before we were married, you never left the office until 8 or 9 at night. Well, I was playing hard to get. I'm just sorry you had to find out my terrible secret so soon. And nobody's looking on the compulsive slob. Hmm. So I see. Well, it's your own fault. If you'd given me any warning, you would have seen the girl you married. Complete with dry martini, sweet smile, and snake dress. I think I like you better this way. Really? Really. I always thought that I had to be perfect for Rod. I used to take a bath and wash my hair in the middle of the day so that he wouldn't see me in curlers or without makeup. That's what I thought marriage was. You know, that's the first time you've talked about Rod without getting spooked. It's the first time I've thought about him without getting spooked. Being married to him seems more and more like something that never really happened. It's like I was never married before. It's weird. That's not weird, Lee. It's love. better? I felt fine until seeing what you've done in my kitchen. Now would you like to tell me what's wrong? Nothing's wrong, Norm. Then why won't you let me call Dr. Rossi? Because nothing's wrong. Come here. Am I going to have to tie you in a chair and put you under a 500 watt bulb and stick needles under your fingernails? Very funny. Then what's wrong? Well, what's wrong with you?
I think I'm going to have a baby. Hmm. What? Norm? I'm sorry. Come on, let's eat. No. I'm not hungry. Well, if we're going to have tin, we might as well get started. Tin? Kids. Remember the night on the beach, the night we got married? A cow for Miss Practical and a pony... Look, don't try and con me anymore. It's trouble and we both know it. And if you have to quit school, I'll never forgive myself. What do you want me to do? Take up a collection in college every week? Mom offered us money, but I told her you wouldn't take it. You told your mom first? Yeah, I was scared. What am I, some kind of ogre? Well, I can work right up to when I have it. And then after a couple of weeks, I can go back to work again. That way you won't have to quit school. You're not going back to work afterwards. What about school? It's not important. Well, that's your cue to repeat 101 good reasons why I should have a good college education. I've already given you a thousand and one reasons. Not important ones. I don't want to own the world, and I don't want to buy it. I don't want to run it. I don't believe all the propaganda about the importance of money and success. Because what's really important is that if we're happy, we bring up a bunch of happy kids. Dad didn't have time to go fishing or to play ball. First he was too busy, and then he was too old. But we're not going to be like that. Our kids aren't going to be strangers. No, Arm. When you're young, you can enjoy your kids. You can understand them better. You can have more fun with them. Look, we can't afford to have a baby. Babies aren't just new little friends. You have to feed them and dress them and send them to school, and all that takes money. Are we going to raise ten kids on the salary of an unskilled nothing? As a matter of fact, we are. Well, stop dreaming. You stop dreaming. Tomorrow, you go to the doctor. If you'll take the money from Mom and stay in college. And if I won't? Then I'll leave. You wouldn't. You couldn't. Look, I wreck everything I touch. First Joe and now you. You wouldn't really leave me, would you? I love you and I want you to be happy. You can't be with me around. It'd kill me if you left me. It's gonna kill you if I stay. Then stay. At least I'll die happy. There's gotta be an answer. We'll find it together, okay? 